प्रोसेस कम्युनिकेशन इंटर प्रोसेस कम्युनिकेशन देर मे बी टू वेज इन विच आई पी सी कैन बी परफॉर्म वन इज डायरेक्ट कम्युनिकेशन एंड अनदर वन इज इन डायरेक्ट कम्युनिकेशन इन केस ऑफ डायरेक्ट कम्युनिकेशन ए मैसेज विल बी सेंड और रिसीव डायरेक्टली टू और फ्रॉम दी प्रोसेस सो देर विल बी टू आर्ग्यूमेंट वन इज योर प्रोसेस आई डी टू विच ए मैसेज हैज टू सेंड और फ्रॉम वेयर ए मैसेज हैज टू रिसीव एंड द मैसेज इन केस ऑफ इनडायरेक्ट कम्युनिकेशन वी विल क्रिएट वन कॉमन स्पेस लाइक मेल बॉक्स where the sending process will put its data or put its message and from where the receiving process will read the message rpc is remote processor call when your process belongs to two different computers remotely we have to send the message to remote process right and this process is called as rpc remote processor call so ipc is required by cooperative processes like one which can affect or be affected by the other process executing in the system so they are called as cooperative processes there are two models of ipc one is shared memory and another one is message passing shared memory model is like the one which is shown in this figure the second figure right hand side figure there are two processes process a and process b this is the architecture of memory this is the the memory At at any point of time in which there are two processes, process A and process B. This is the kernel space. A common shared memory space is created by kernel in the user level, and these two communicating processes A and B will communicate through this common shared memory. So they will put their message to this common shared memory. and the reading or receiving process will read message from this space kernel will not intervene once it has been created this space and handed over this space to process a and b now it's responsibility of the program developer or the process developer creator to maintain the consistency of this common shared space right it's not the responsibility of kernel to have some consistency mechanism over this shared memory space whereas in case of message passing the sending process will send or submit its message to kernel then kernel will send the message to the receiving process or the receiving process will receive message from the kernel so every time kernel intervention is required in case of message passing so overhead to the system in case of message passing is more than that in case of shared memory model right so when we want to share some big data we will be prefer using the shared memory model of the ipc so shared memory is faster than message passing because no kernel intervention is required shared memory is useful for exchanging large amount of data system calls are required only to establish shared memory regions so kernel intervention is required only to establish the shared memory once the shared memory is created after onwards kernel intervention is not required to exchange the data shared memory can be accessed directly by the processes 
because it is created in the user space so processes can directly access the memory without any intervention of the kernel write write condition at shared memory should be taken care by the process not by the operating system so this is the responsibility of process designer or the program developer to have some mechanism so that your shared memory write write condition will be fulfilled to make the variables consistent in case of message passing systems they are useful for distributed environment when your processes belongs to different different systems message passing implemented using system calls so every time kernel intervention is required message passing is easy to implement message passing is useful for exchanging smaller amount of data they are not preferred to exchange the large amount of data so when two processes communicate with each other synchronization is required so blocking send means sending process is blocked until the message is received by the recipient or here recipient may be a process or may be a mailbox depending on whether it is direct communication or indirect communication non blocking send means sending process is not blocked blocking receive the receiver blocks until a message is available non blocking receive the receiver retrieves either a valid message or a null ipc can be implemented using pipes so there are major two categories of pipes one is ordinary pipes and another one is named pipes so ordinary pipes are unidirectional in which data is written by a process on one end and read by another process at other end pipe is treated as a special type of file can be accessed by read or write system calls so pipe is nothing but a common shared file by processes in which read and write system calls are used to read and write the data ordinary pipe can be used within a process only that means between parent and child processes ordinary pipes cannot be used between two different processes they can be only used between parent and child processes so this is the diagrammatic representation of ordinary pipe in which a parent and child can communicate to each other using this common shared file in which there are two file descriptors fd means file descriptor fd0 so parent process will be using this fd0 for writing and fd1 is used to read the data which was written by this parent process using fd1 and similarly child will also create its file descriptor to write data so child will also write into this file on the writing end that is fd0 and whatever has been written by the child process to this pipe will be read by this parent process with the help of same fd1 from the writing end so point to note here is that this end of this pipe is writing end and this end of this pipe is reading end right 
so both child and parent will write to the one end that is writing end here the child process fd0 is also writing to this end and both parent and child process will be reading from the read end if we look at the program for a simple or ordinary pipe so we have defined a buffer size of 25 read end is 0 write end is 1 int main care write message buffer underscore size equal to greetings so we have written greetings string to buffer size which was defined as size 25 then read message another array of size 25 fd2 integer array of size 2 which will be used to create the read and write end file descriptor for the ordinary pipe pid underscore t pid to store the process id of child process into the parent process now creating the pipe if pipe fd equal to equal to minus 1 return some error that means if file if, if our pipe is not created return the error otherwise for a child process now point to note here is that pipe is created before the child process if pipe is created after the child process this pipe would not be able to accessible between parent and child process so if you want to communicate parent and child process through ordinary pipes we have to create the pipe before creation of the child process right so here pid is equal to fork at this particular point we have created the what a new process a new child process so in our parent process pid is equal to the process id of child process and in our child process pid is equal to 0 if child process successfully created so let's again consider our parent process first to execute so in our parent process pid is equal to some non zero value so this statement will be false this statement is true if that means it is the parent process so close fd read end because we don't want to read anything parent want to write only in the in the uh, into this ordinary pipe so that's why we want to close this unread or unused end of the pipe so close function is used to close the pipe what is pipe basically pipe is nothing but the a shared file so we are closing the shared file shared file means fd read end and read end was 0 so fd 0 so file descriptor with 0 means reading end is closed similarly parent is writing something to the pipe so write what fd right end so fd right end means fd right end means 1 so fd1 comma write message and write message was greetings str len write message plus 1 so 
write function requires the file descriptor to the file the message and how many bytes to write right then close the fd write end so here our parent process terminates at this particular point now let's come to the child process so child processes execution will also start from the fork statement so from here child will start in child process pid is equal to 0 this statement is false this if is again false it will come to else part in else part close fd write end because child process doesn't want to write anything into the file and uh, then read fd read end that means reading file descriptor comma read message comma buffer size so in read function first argument is the file descriptor from where the data has to read the second argument is the variable in which your read data will be stored third argument is defining the size or the bytes that has to be read that is your buffer size 25 and then printf read percentage s read underscore message which you have read from the file descriptor or the ordinary pipe which was written by your parent process at this point and finally close the fd read so this is about how ordinary pipes work now point to remember here is that ordinary pipes will only be shared between parent and the child process number one number two your pipe has to created before the child process has been created if this pipe was created after the child process this pipe will not be able to used to communicate between parent and the child process number third you have to use file descriptor fd this fd was passed as an argument to your pipe function or pipe system call to read and to write the message for reading end it is 0 for writing end it is 1 so these three points are important here so that's all about the PC.